Ladies and gentlemen, this is Big Ray here for OneWrestling.com and Hameen Media. And we are here at the Regal Cinemas Theater in Union Square, New York City. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here for 350 days. 350 days. What is 350 days? Well, it is the life of a professional wrestler on the road for 350 days a year. Could you imagine doing your job for 350 days with no breaks, traveling? As you see here, ladies and gentlemen, we're here with a plethora of fans with some legends. You see we have J.J. Dillon, the great Tito Santana, Greg the Hammer Valentine. And hopefully later on today, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be able to talk to them. But we are about to go in and watch this great film. It's me, my man Billy Ray Valentine, right behind the camera. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? We will be right back. Let's go check out this movie. Come on. Hey, come on up, guys. ECW. Excited. Uh, Grew up in the uh, New York City pro wrestling fan scene with Evan uh, and eventually decided I would uh, quit college, run off, join the circus, and become a pro wrestler, uh, pro wrestling personality myself. Um, have known Evan forever and I've always known of his passion for the business. He loves the business. He, he's so fervently passionate about everything that has come before and really maintaining the, the longevity of the business. And you can tell whether he's talking about something he's seen 40 years ago, 40 minutes ago, even when he critiques something and gives an opinion on the business. He does it because he loves it. He does it because he cares. And I think the pro wrestling business uh, deserves and needs more fans like Evan. And, and to see him once again be involved in a wrestling-based project, uh, it, it really fills my heart with joy. So we should all thank Evan for, for all <laughs> what he did. Yeah, well, Gordon, uh, let me thank Evan Crowdy. He's looking debonair in the blue suit over here all the way from Baltimore. Media from Baltimore. Under the mat radio. Okay, folks, we don't have a lot of time. Throw out some questions for these legends. Just get, just shoot them out. We can hear you. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Questions. Hello, gentlemen. Would you encourage young wrestlers to get involved with it now, now that it's different from when you were involved as wrestlers? I wouldn't encourage my sons to to, to get into the business. It, it's, a, it's a very difficult business to be in. Uh, one of the biggest fears that I had if my kids wanted to get into the business was uh, the drug scene. You know, besides uh, being away from, I, I told my kids that you want to be away from your kids as much as I'm away from you, you guys. And they never asked me to be, I mean, I have, uh, very successful kids, thank God, and you know, it, it's it's a very, especially now, it's it's really difficult to make it in professional business uh, wrestling because there's only one company that's uh, that's successful that you can make a living, and there's not too many spots. Thank you, Nelson Torres, journalist. I know you must have a question. Ah. I just want to say it was a great, great film. I just wanted to say that first things first. Um, now, I just wanted to know one thing. How long did it take this movie to make together? Because I see a lot of people that actually passed on, obviously. But I just want to know how long did it make um, get this together? You know, five years. years. Five years. Five years we worked on that. Five years. Wow. Okay. Good job, guys. Anybody else? Don't be shy. Okay. Dylan Club, Marty Skrull. Thank you. Um, do any of you see the spots that are being done today with indies and New Japan and everything? And um, do you have any opinions on it? The level of danger do you feel has been increased, or maybe like less of a attention to safety with some of the things that the wrestlers do today that are, you know, younger and trying to get more notoriety? Well, I, I don't think they wrestle like we did. 
you know, they don't grab a hold, you know. If they do, then they're, they're jumping off the top rope five minutes later. And they're take, it seems like they're taking more chances, you know, of being airborne. And I, I know for a fact a lot of guys are getting hurt all the time. And, uh, but I see good matches too, old school matches, what, what I call it. But uh, um, I really think they kind of got away from storylines that are good. They got away from uh, stories in the ring. You know, I you know, always told a story when I wrestled Tito all the time. We, we had dog fights, but we had a story going on, and we could go 60 minutes every night. So they, they don't have that going for them. They need someone to slow it down. All right. Um, I'd like to thank Mike Johnson for all his support as well, and uh, I, I'd like to answer that same question too. I, I still like to go out and see like some of the current wrestling, and it's very hard now because back in the day, we we could go somewhere and stay for six months to a year and get to know the fans, build a reputation. And as Greg said, you know, we were we basically we were storytellers. We told a story every match, every night. And now it's hard for young talent because they don't have they don't have that place to learn the trade like we did. We had the benefit of of having to learn or we or we or we didn't survive. And I go to independent shows and they try to take a hold and some smart ass in the back will yell, boring. And in the day, if somebody yelled boring, and call me if I'm wrong, nothing would happen. And somebody could, you wouldn't hear somebody else boring again, because we felt that we were in control of the situation. And okay, Mr. Smart Ass, sit back there. That, I'm going to wait 20 minutes, and at the end of 20 minutes, he was the one guy sitting on the edge of his chair screaming louder than anybody else in the building. Because we, we had confidence in, in our ability and control, of, and like Greg said, we were telling a story. And nowadays, the guys hear that boring, and, and they just, it's like somebody hit them in the keister with a, a cattle prodder. They think they've got to jump up and do something. And now they're not in control anymore. The audience is in control. That's where the business really changed dramatically. All right. We have another question. How do you guys feel about some of the smaller groups like ROH or Evolve? Do you think they'll ever be able to compete with WWE or overtake them in popularity? I don't think anybody can compete with WWE when they've got... I mean, they're getting ready to go on Fox... Sports or not Fox Sports, but Big Fox next year is what I heard, and then they got three hours. And they're going to keep the USA Network, and they got NBC wrapped up. Who can compete with that? That's what's the problem with professional wrestling right now. There's no competition. You need and the Japan wrestling thing that's on. I mean that's good, but that's not going to compete. And the Impact Wrestling that's not going to compete. So you know to make to make a great sport even greater is having competition, and right now there's no competition to him, WWE fans. We have time for a few more. Thank you. This question is directed to Mr. Santana. Tito, you know, you came up in the 80s where there weren't a ton of really popular Latino wrestlers. And you had quite the influence on the Latino culture in the 80s, in the world of professional wrestling. How do you feel you affected the Latino culture in New York City, on the East Coast, all over the world? I think it's, I think it's, uh, I think we underestimate your importance to the world of professional wrestling in the history, in the lineage. You did a lot. I just wanted to say thank you. Let me let me say something because I don't want him to have to toot his own horn. <laughs> in, 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 in the 70s, I was still an active wrestler. I was in Amarillo. I was a main eventer. And there was a young guy out of West Texas State. A couple of them. One guy was named Tully Blanchard. Another guy was named Merced Solis. 
and then Merced Solis later became Tito Santana. And so I watched him from the very, very beginning, and they used to hang around with Terry Funk because it was cool at the time to you know, hang with, with Crazy Terry. But for somebody who was in the business, I could see from his first match that he had what I, in this thing made reference to, called the it factor. And I can't, I can't, if I had all night to try to explain what it is, I, 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 I really couldn't verbalize it. The only thing I could do would be to say, he had it, he, he had it, and still does, and that's why he's been a success. Uh, the way I think I influenced the Hispanics, I was really proud to be Hispanic, and uh, I just wanted to be a positive role model. You know, I didn't want to go out there, anywhere, and especially after I had kids. Uh, my parents were divorced, and I didn't want the same thing to, for my kids to go through that, because it, it, was, it wasn't a very pleasant thing. So I, I just tried to live a, uh, a, a life where I wasn't going to get in too much trouble. Uh, one thing that happened to me uh, in 2004 when I got inducted into the Hall of Fame, uh, when it really sunk in that I had made a big difference was when uh, Eddie Guerrero was the world champion and he came up to me and he, and he thanked me for opening the doors for Hispanics with the WWE. Uh, you know, and he was re really sincere and, you know, that, that uh, I started thinking, you know, maybe I did make a difference to the Hispanics and uh, I've always been proud to be Hispanic and to uh, have been a pos positive role model and you know, now I'm a school teacher and I, I, I think I'm still making a difference with uh, young kids. It's been a good ride. There you go. This question for Greg. Uh, what do you feel was the turning point in your career? Was it there was a lot of turning points. So. <laughs> I had a, I had a lot of breaks in NWA, a lot of breaks up here in WWF, and uh, wow, I, that's a hard question to answer. Uh, I guess the biggest crowning glory and accomplishment was when I got to go in the Hall of Fame with Tito here, Aww. and the matches I had with Tito. <laughs> I'm not just saying that because he's here. Okay, J.P. Zock of ProWrestlingStories.com Ox, Ox Baker, still my heart watching this documentary. He was intense. What, I, when you guys were interviewing him, was he as intense as he came off on screen? <laughs> and how was that shepherd's pie? Did anyone get a chance to taste it? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll tell you, it's very funny you bring it up. We were at his friend's house, Glenn Ferrari, when he was hanging out in Connecticut. He actually took the shepherd's pie and started to put it in the dishwasher at first. <laughs> and, wow. There's a, there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that you guys can see. So. Uh, he really was our comic relief for this movie. He was fantastic. He's great. He's great. Great guy. I mean, uh, just uh, I think he's gone too soon. Yeah. It kind of stayed in character almost the whole time. We were filming him. It was, a, it was a good thing, but um, he did have his funny moments, and there's a lot, so much more that we could have put in this film, but of course we only have a limited time. There's a lot, a lot of stories that we felt were also good that might come out later on, and I had to make either a second film, but that's something that you know we're going to think about. Speaking of limited time, we only have time for one or two more. We have Hollywood from GLOW. <laughs> Guys, this film was fantastic. I loved it. Thank you all very much for your honesty because some people just don't tell it the way that it is and I appreciated all of it and thank you so much for that. Very cool. Thank you. Thank and thank you. you for your support. All right. Okay. We have my educator friend. Hi, I just wondered about the Kate Gilroy story. You showed her picture and he made reference to her. What was the story there? The story was that she was the one that actually uh, got um, Billy Graham got the kidneys from. All right, um, she, it was kind of a, it was a tough story. We actually had a private investigator uh, track down the mother. Wow. And I actually wrote a letter to the mother explaining what we were trying to do and she sent me those pictures that were in the film. And we wanted to do a dedication, especially with Billy Graham, the way he was talking about her. 
and that's where we can open that. But she was killed, and she was. She young. was killed in a car accident at 23 oh. years old. Oh, wow. Terrible. Right, and that's how he ended up with the kidneys and stuff. And it was a shame when we found out about the story completely. Yeah. But we felt we had to put a special dedication for her. And since Billy was talking about her, right. that's how we we followed through with the pictures yeah. and stuff. That was very nicely done. Thank you. Thank you. One last question, and then we're going to do a group shot. One last question. What I think I'm looking at here and what I saw on the screen is what I think is going to go down in history as the golden age of wrestling, seriously. Mm -hmm. What came before and what came after, I, I think we saw the golden age before us. The question I have is, I know Tito mentioned that uh, he's a teacher, he's an educator, I know JJ is an author. Can each of you um, say what other endeavors after wrestling and your retirement from wrestling uh, you went into? Yeah, I, I, I taught school for for a year or two. I, I, I had the dream since I was a teenager of wanting to become a professional wrestler. And it wasn't an easy profession to get into. I would talk to the old timers and, and I hinted at one of the clips where I was told by George Bolas, the original Zebra Kid, the first advice he gave me was get your education. And when I'm asked today, I, I give that same advice. Because the wrestling business, we, we all, we've had tremendous success. But <laughs> There was a lot of people that never got to live, had the dream, but never even got to go in the ring one time. And so that's why the importance of education is what I stress with everybody. Wrestling business, if you love it that much, and you want it that much, and you'll continue to not be disappointed, because there's a lot of disappointments, a lot of rejection. If you have the education, like I said there, that's in your back pocket. They can never take that away from you. And that's important. And so uh, I tell my own kids, first thing is get an education. The rest of the business is, uh, yeah. if you're lucky and if you really want it, it'll still be there. Myself, uh, I was lucky I had the education. I played football and graduated in 1975. Uh, so my wife is the one that encouraged me, you know, try teaching, try teaching. But I. I just didn't think teachers made enough money to, to I wanted to maintain the same lifestyle that, that uh, they were used to. Uh, so I, I started, you know, did uh, substitute teacher for two years and then I started teaching. Uh, and my wife hadn't worked for 17 years that we had been married and I said, uh, look, uh, I think you're going to have to go out and work. Good job. <laughs> you know, uh, I, but I said, uh, she didn't have a college education, she had one year, and, and I said, uh, I really don't want you to be working for minimum wage for somebody, you know, for some guy to be pinching you in the ass, and, you know, because he's your boss, and, and I said, uh, let's think of a business that we can get into, and we knew nothing about business, neither her nor I, and uh, we started maybe a, a little deli or something, I said, we need to get into a people business because we're good people and if you treat people good, they'll come back. Uh, so we went to look at a couple of delis and it didn't work. And then I, I had an aunt that uh, had a hair salon in Texas and I was looking at a, a Sunday paper, you can imagine a New Jersey Sunday paper, and uh, in the very bottom I saw like a three line ad for a hair salon for, for sale. And we went to see it and we bought it uh, and neither one of us cut hair, uh, <laughs> but uh, we were very lucky that about a, a year after we bought it, another salon went under and everybody came to work for us. So we, my wife has had the hair, you know, she's the one that runs it. Uh, she's, we, we've had a hair salon for over 21 years now. So, uh, you know, it's, you know it's, it's everything. But I believe, you know, I'm, uh, there's no halo over my head, but I believe in God and, and I believe that God has... Uh, set the path for, for my life and something always there, you know, there's always somebody to help and, and uh, you know, I believe in, in the good Lord. Yeah, I'm a man of faith myself. I, I have to have that faith after what I've been through in wrestling, but wrestling was real good to me and, and I always knew that eventually I had to get out of it, and, but I'm still kind of in it still, you know, autograph sessions and everything, but, and, and everybody still recognizes me so you know the wrestling has always been good to me and it's, it's good you know my name is still good and still out there and still relevant
but I invested in condominiums on the beach, I invested in a shopping center, and so real estate, you know, that that's really what helped me out and is still helping me out today, so, you know, you got to do something with that money when you make it, you can't just spend it. Joe Gardner, you like to wrap this up? Uh, yeah, uh, real quick as far as uh, what I do, I see uh, JJ, Tito, and Greg also at conventions and signings, uh, and it's thanks to fans like you that that's where you guys can really support not just the industry or the different offices, but you can actually help the people who have given their lives to pro wrestling. You can kind of give back, have a moment with them, spend some time, meet us. If you have disposable income, of course that's great. You don't have to twist our arm to take it. If you don't on that given day or for that given person, you know, just just to have a conversation, let somebody know you care, uh, you know, put it up on social media that we're great guys. Maybe somebody else will have that disposable income down the road. Uh, as far as what I do, um, I a little bit of everything that I've heard, um, a little bit of looking at businesses to invest in. Uh, I also teach math at Mathnasium, which is a company that has, I think, uh, about 600 stores now. Uh, teach math in people's homes as well as a boutique tutor. Um, merchant services, which is uh, most people would know it as credit card processing. Um, investing in the stock market. And uh, that's about it. And just, you know, wrestling still, uh, voice work, background acting, stuff like that. There you go. So uh, please, folks, if you enjoyed the movie, spread the word. And uh, let's hear it for J.J. Dillon. Darren Antola, Tito Santana, Greg the Hammer Valentine, David Wilkins, Joe Gertner, and we couldn't have done it without Bobby Rydell. Thank all of you for your support. I really appreciate it. And we can't forget Evan Ginsberg, who was a big, big help in all of us. And the announcing, the questions, the advertising, and also a big part of uh, pushing us and giving us the encouragement to finish the film. Thank you again.